friends welcome back to my channel my name is Ariana Elizabeth and today we are going to work on tightness in the hips the hip flexors and the hamstrings so go ahead and grab your mat and I'll meet you in child's pose all right making your way to child's pose come down to your mat spread your knees wide to your mat just to the edges Bring your big toes to touch. Sink the hips back towards the heels. Extend the fingertips long out in front of you. And you can bring your forehead in contact with the mat. Maybe slowly massage your forehead on the mat here just to begin to integrate yourself into your practice. Maybe walk your fingertips over to the left side. Breathe into the right lung. Nice long deep breaths in through the nose. And open up, exhales. And slowly walk the fingertips through center over to the right hand side breathing deeply into the left lung again nice long deep breath in through the nose open mouth exhale And then slowly walking the fingertips back through center. Take another deep breath in here. Open mouth, exhale. Sending breath to the hips and any other tight areas you're experiencing. Maybe you feel some sensations right now. You can acknowledge them and continue to breathe deeply in here. When you're ready, slowly walk up through tabletop, directly onto the tops of your thighs. Shine your chest forward and maybe flex your toes, wiggle your toes here. And then rock back to child's pose. One more time, inhale, rock up to the tops of the thighs. Flex the toes, wiggle the toes. And exhale back to child's pose. Awesome, this time, slowly wiggle your knees, spread them a little further than the mat. Press up to the tops of your hands or press up to your palms more so, and then begin to flex the toes out. Coming into frog, you can rock back and forth here. Making sure to definitely breathe deeply. Just small rocks will do it. Nothing too substantial here. Nothing too intense. And when you're ready, slowly press up, bringing the knees in to tabletop. Inhale, curl the toes, and exhale, send the hips up and back into downward facing dog. And you can bend your knees here, come up to your toes if that feels a little more accessible. And then maybe begin to kind of straighten the knees out a little as you warm up. 
Maybe you pedal your downward dog out. Dropping into the right hip and the left hip. And when you're ready, come to a still downward dog. Inhale, lift your right heel up to the ceiling and exhale, open your downward dog out. Three-legged downward dog. Breathe here. And slowly bring it back through center down to the mat. Great job. Inhale, lift the left heel up. Opening your downward dog, opening those hips. Maybe you flex the toes. Then bring it back through center and right on down. Inhale up to the toes and exhale. Send your chest a little closer to your thighs. Another inhale up to the toes. Exhale, send the heels down. Inhale, gaze forward. Come down to your knees. Cross your ankles behind you and come to a seated position on your mat. Extend your feet out in front of you. Flex your toes towards you. And then inhale, seated Tadasana. Exhale, forward fold, seated forward fold, fold it over. Again, now you don't want to arch over, but more so reach for your um, calves or your ankles and kind of pin your hands down to draw your chest forward. You wanna keep your gaze actually up more so if you aren't able to flatten it all the way down. It's much more of a beneficial stretch to pull your chest forward towards the thighs. And just breathe here. I often find it very beneficial to inhale back up and then exhale, forward fold back into it. Maybe just add some movement. When you're ready, slowly come back up to a seated position. Bring your right ankle up towards you and your left hand on the outside of your right foot, right hand on the outside of the right shin. So you're actually gonna try and bring your knee in towards your uh, elbow crease. You wanna rock the baby here essentially. So you'll draw your leg up towards you and just rock it side to side. And then maybe you bring your arm underneath your leg and then pull it up a little closer to you. And don't forget to breathe here. Sometimes I find it beneficial here to lean back and forth. I always like to add a little bit of movement. It also kind of helps to remind me to breathe. Alrighty, now let's go ahead and bring that foot down to the mat. And then let's draw our left ankle towards us. Right hand on the outside of the left foot. Knee into the left elbow crease and rock the baby here. And then 
bring the arms underneath. Draw your left shin up closer towards you. You really want to breathe here. Sending that breath into the hips. Release that and flex the toes and point, flex, point, inhale, flex, and point. One more time, flex, point. Awesome. Go ahead and draw the left sole or the right sole of your foot into the left thigh. And keeping your hips square, inhale up to another seated Tadasana and exhale, forward fold. And you wanna work on keeping your hips square here. You don't have to worry about reaching for your foot necessarily if your knee is accessible, you know, your leg or ankle, whatever is accessible to you. And just a few breaths here. Slowly come back up to rising. Stretch the right foot out. This time, bring the left sole of the foot into the right inner thigh. Inhale up to a seated Tadasana. And exhale, fold it over. You may notice tension a little more on one side than the other. That's totally normal. Slowly release. Bring both feet to meet each other. Scoot forward and come down to your back. Now you can bring the soles of your feet together in Supta Baddha Konasana, letting your knees open out wide. You can bring the palms of your hands right to your inner thighs and just let gravity do some work here. Deep breath in through the nose. Open mouth, exhale. Slowly take the hands, 
on the backs of your thighs and close your knees together like a book. And with your feet flat on the mat, just begin to windshield wiper your knees over. No rush. All right. Now you're gonna take your right leg, cross it over your left, just like you're seated, just casually crossing it over. And then slowly drop your knees over to the left side, arms out to a T. In this angle variation, You might even find yourself bringing your right foot under the left shin a little more, or the left calf, namaste. Bring them back up in the center. Uncross your legs. This time bring the left leg over the right and deep breath in, exhale, drop them over to the right side. And you can gaze over your left shoulder up in the center. Stamp your feet back on the mat. You'll bring your right ankle to cross over your or right ankle up to your left knee. Draw your knees in towards you and using your hands interlaced on the outside of your left knee you can draw your left knee up towards your chest. And you can flex your toes here or just relax your feet, whatever feels comfortable to you. And just breathe here. And maybe with a deep breath in, on that exhale, draw the knee a little closer to your body. Slowly release, cross your left ankle or the right knee, interlace your fingers on the outside of your right knee, deep breath in, and exhale, draw the right knee in towards the chest. Maybe another deep breath in and exhale, pull it a little further, a little closer to you. And slowly release. And take your hands on the outsides of your knees or on top of your knees and just rotate 
your knees out. Nice big circles. Wonderful. Slowly rock up back to a seated position. And this time, what are they gonna do? And from here, we can make our way back to tabletop. Stacking the shoulders over the wrists, hips over the knees. Extend your right leg out behind you and then bring it in. <coughs> <coughs> Extend your right leg out behind you and then bring it up in between your hands into a low lunge. Now you can adjust yourself here, but you're you might want to scoot your toes forward a little and find yourself in a nice low lunge, as deep as it feels comfortable to you. Feel free to keep that left hand down if that feels more comfortable to you, or you can come all the way up. Just wherever you are, make sure that you can breathe into this lunge. So if you find yourself holding your breath here, just drop your hand down and breathe. Now, if it's accessible to you, you can drop the right hand down behind. Um, now, if it's accessible to you, you can drop the right hand down on the inner part of the right foot. Heel toe your right foot towards the edge of your mat, and then come onto the edge of that right foot, opening up the hip a little more. Wonderful. You can bring your foot back in between your hands, bend back up into that left leg, and then send your right knee back down to the mat in tabletop. All right, and this time let's do the left leg. Extend the left leg out long, and then bring it in between your hands, making your way to your desired lunge. So again, that may be completely hands-free. That may be fingertips, maybe palm. And just breathe here. And then if it's accessible to you, place your left hand on the inner left part of your foot. Heel toe your left foot to the outside of your mat or the outer edge of your mat and then come on to the edge of your pinky side and open your hips. And when you're ready, you can bend back up into that right leg, heel toe your left foot in between your hands, and come back to a tabletop. 
Awesome. Inhale, curl the toes. Exhale, send your hips up and back into downward facing dog one more time. You might find that this downward dog is a little more accessible now. And so you can inhale up to your toes. Exhale, send the heels a little closer to the mat. Inhale, back up to the toes. And exhale, down to the mat. Then inhale, up to the toes, dome the spine. And come down to your knees, making your way back to child's pose. Two breaths here. And slowly rock up to tabletop. Cross your feet behind you once again and come to sitting on your mat. The last posture I'll take is a good fire log. <coughs> so bringing the right ankle on top of the left knee and then lining up the right knee on top of the left ankle. You can stay here if you feel comfortable right here if you're feeling that stretch in the hips. But if you'd like to take it a little, a little deeper, a little further, you can inhale lift up your chest and exhale begin to fold over walk your fingertips out in front of you and drop the crown of the head it's very important here to breathe Nice deep breaths in through the nose. Open mouth, exhale. I know you may be feeling some really strong sensations here. Again, if there's anything pinching or painful, feel free to gently back your way out of it. But if you feel like a, a dull pain that's kind of increasing um, and I shouldn't say more so pain but just sensation um, you just want to send some breath into that and slowly make your way back up and we'll switch legs this time bringing your right leg to the mat left ankle on top of the right knee directly stacked on top and then stacking the left knee on top of the right ankle inhale lift the chest and exhale fold it over breathe here It's important that if you feel like you're fighting it, you need to breathe a little deeper. And slowly make your way back up through center. And you can come to resting all the way down onto your mat. You can let your legs go out long in front of you. Palms facing up, making your way to Shavasana. Let the feet fall out to the sides, sending breath throughout the entire body here. Closing the eyes, relaxing the jaw. Removing the tongue from the roof of your mouth. Send some space between your teeth. Just part your teeth. 
but keep your lips sealed. Removing any wrinkles in between your brows, letting the shoulders melt into the mat. Nice, even breaths here. Organic, natural breath. You might find that you're lifting your chin. Just relax your chin down towards your chest. Always know that you have as much time in Shavasana as you need, but if you'd like to go ahead and move on with your day, you can begin to wiggle your fingertips and your toes here. Maybe reach the arms overhead. And roll over on either side in fetal pose, using your bicep as a pillow. Fetal pose represents the rebirth from our mat to our daily practice. It's nice to make that transition peacefully, gently, calmly. And when you're ready, you can slowly press up to a seated position with your eyes closed here. And you can rest your palms down or up on your knees, whatever feels more comfortable to you. Find a nice tall seat, really lift the crown of the head. And the yogi teacher, student and friend in me honors and appreciates and recognizes the yogis, teachers, friends, and students, and all of you, and I pray that you have a blessed day, that you feel empowered to be your best self, know that you are worthy, you are loved, you are capable. You can bring your hands together to touch, draw them up to your forehead to remind yourself of positive thoughts, good thoughts. Hands to your lips to remind yourself of positive words, kind words to others, and even kinder words to yourself. Be gentle with yourself. And then your hands to your heart to remind yourself that you are love. You were created from the ultimate source of love. You can flutter your eyes open. God bless, namaste. Thank you friends again for joining me and letting me join you in your practice. Um, I appreciate you all so very much. If you enjoyed this practice, please give it a thumbs up. Um, comment below, let me know if you liked something, if you didn't like something, if you'd like to see something else. Um, if you would like to donate ever to my future studio and just as I get things prepared to deliver more to you all. I'll leave the link below to my GoFundMe. Anything is appreciated. No pressure at all. And um, I'll see you in my next video. Bye.